All right, we're fully unscripted, and welcome to Fully Unscripted's Improv Show. We are fully unscripted out of Reno, Nevada. I want to thank you all for coming here today. So, uh, Ryan, why don't you, you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, my name is Ryan. This is what they call me, uh, and I help out with the improv. Kyle. Hi, I'm Kyle Thomas. I'm Thomas. Stuff and things and stuff. I have an introduction. And Reeve. Thank you. I'm Reeve of the Tokyo and Everything. <laughs> what do we add you? I don't remember this. You picked me off the streets, remember? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We got you off of Oakland. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, thanks. You kind of blend in. Anyway. So, we're doing a show in the style of a Whose Land Is It Anyway? But we're going to not play a lot of their games. We have a lot of our own games. So, our first game is called Slides. How this game works is we're going to give you a topic, uh, a presentation on topic of your choosing. So, the, the presenters have never seen the images on the slide before, and they're going to have to make the presentation fit those images. So, can I get a topic that you want to hear a presentation on? It could be a sales topic, it could be a school topic. Anyone? Anything else? <laughs> the Star Trek anime. No, our first presenter, he is straight out of England. Go, go for it. Where's my clicker? There we go. Okay. So I'm from England. Uh, don't mind the old accent. I uh, was born in places. So, uh, my slide is not using its teleporter correctly. Make go. It wasn't on. That's, uh, that's always a big problem. So, what we have here is uh, Star Trek in the main, folded up into Spock, Kirk, and uh, Dr. T. In his degree. This is a uh, this is our beta tester for Star Trek animation. She uh, she's very important to all of our work. Uh, the the arrow she uses to mark the skin of our animators. They never forget the reviews that she gives. They are permanently scarred into them, just like this. <laughs> that is one of our animators. He didn't want to be arrowed, so he nailed himself in the head. Doesn't write much anymore. Star Trek and Star Wars are the same thing. Everybody knows this. <laughs> so the animated Star Wars series takes place in the Star Trek universe. It's just a very, very long time ago and very, very far away. Uh, and they do. And uh, his assistant. That's terrifying. That's, that, that, that showed up in episode 4, The Attack of the Tentacle. It, uh, it, this name's dog, dog named Vito, and he, uh, he tentacled people. It was terrifying. <laughs> episode 5, Revenge of the Tentacle, in which he turned into a human and ate a rabbit. Fun fact, it's a rabbit from Monty Python, and uh, it's not quite as vicious as you might think. That's what he might call it. He helped out with the rabbit. Uh, it turns out he's kind of crazy. And uh, he hides in the bushes and waits for people to come out and sneak out. And uh, then they turn into this. A uh, shark. Sure. That is uh, very, very benign. It needs to be like sharks. They, uh, ooh, they seem to be dark in here. Okay, so Shark is, is a very nice, that's our lead writer, Mark. After the last gig got nailed, uh, we hired him, and he's uh, doing a great job, uh, except for the fact that he always wants to be underwater. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to have the marking for Star Trek Animation come up here. Um, Dr. Billabong? Hello there, I'm Dr. Billabong, and how do you? So, over time, the demand of Star Trek animation has waxed and waned, as you can see here. And so right now it's at an all-time peak at 
we're going to take advantage of that by getting them lots of money in cats. Cats are really big right now, so, and everyone who likes anime likes cats, and everyone who likes Star Trek likes cats. Everyone likes cats. And money. We like money. Now, we're trying to make this more quiet this season, so we're going to have, this is our dolphin trainer, she, uh, she was working with cats earlier, but right now she's working with dolphins, because dolphins are obviously easier to work with. So, in order to do this, she uses tiny octopi. Tiny octopi I use to control the dolphins, kind of like this sort of stick into the dolphin's brain stem and make it a little bit more docile. We can't do that with the cats, because the cats are on land and, yes. Very unethical. Like this. <laughs> now, these are animated mascots of yesteryear. We just, they, they, they are down on their luck. And it's the perfect work workers for us because they're very cheap so we can get our cats and our money. <laughs> now, Is that beautiful? <laughs> oh yeah, this is an interesting episode. Episode 3 of the next season. Uh, it's an entire planet of... Well, we call them Zaxonians. And they convert people into them. Very scary stuff. <laughs> like the cats. The cats are very popular. Cats being converted into Daxonians are scary. So, let me hand it off to uh, Carl Weathers, our expert at locations. Yes, the Weathers of the location. This one, that's what I like to call it. Now, Star Trek takes place in a lot of places. Uh, the, the, the violet here, that takes place on the starship. The green takes place on those exoplanets. Uh, the blue, those take place next to the cats, as we've already mentioned. And the red takes place in Kirk's bedroom. <laughs> now, Kirk, when he's in his bedroom, he's not a cat first. He likes dogs. So much so that he puts on a dog mask and looks at himself. Now, on there, there's this one planet that I've been trying to get my uh, esteemed colleagues to... to and an eight for me. Uh, this is a planet full of dust and hedgehogs. Those... I haven't really got a thought, I just want to see that happen. I do want to do a crossover with uh, Game of Thrones, where Kirk tries to feed everyone cookies. They're not going to be that either. So, I was trying to suggest maybe ice cream sandwiches instead of cookies. But, uh... The producer does not like ice cream. He is one of those lactose intolerant guys. So uh, I tried to get him some beer. <laughs> he likes veal. He likes hunting. So I said, what if we put deer in China and have Kurt go to China and try to rescue the deer from the, the population centers? But they just don't see that as a good Star Trek episode. Maybe because of her. <laughs> now, little known fact, when there are deer in China, people like to lick doorknobs. It is one of their superstitions. I don't know why I'm not an anthropologist. Uh, so I just want to share that with you. Now, the tentacle... That is right. The tentacles, as we've mentioned before, uh, we want to keep them in Star Trek. We don't want them to branch out into other stuff. Uh, that one scene in the Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, that was not my fault. He just got out. So, I, I, I've been rambling on too long. I'm going to hand it back to my friend from England to finish off the presentation. So, uh, we, we got more clothes. 
for characters. Uh, Spock got smaller, which he turned into a smurf. And uh, Kirk got a lot bigger after we found out those bedroom scenes really worked out. Um, Dr. T, he hasn't even shown up yet, but people still like him. Um, and then we have like the Lord Blurple and the... Uh, what is this killer? Teal. That's another killer. Teal? Teal? I like Teal, we'll get him on Star Trek. Alright, so... As you heard, uh, he likes weird stuff. Um, he wanted to make an entire planet of minion profons. It was really odd, but we did it anyway. And uh, we ate really well that night. So, now, the belt of tentacles. It gets really small when you put them in a coffee bowl. It's, it's amazing. And then you can take a fork and you eat them, and people call it vomit. It's, it's amazing. So, um, yeah, and then, and then we afterwards uh, <laughs> turn into cat lobsters. See, because we, we were trying to add cats into the Star Trek animation, and uh, we figured that we like seafood too. And uh, if we dress them up as lobster, maybe they taste better. It didn't work. And uh, people got really mad that we put a cat in the pot. <laughs> so uh, after that, this is what we tried. Uh, he, he likes fucking faces. Anybody want to hug? It, it's, I swear he's nice. It, see, no, no, don't, 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 Alright, uh, we'll contact you in six hours. After, uh, we'll have a new episode made about you. It'll be, awesome. It'll be a red one, we swear. Alright, so uh, this is uh, the new cat prototype. It, uh, it's amazing. It's a dragon cat. Uh, we find them in China, and uh, we import them, and then we animate them. Uh, it's a very complex CG process. Um, and and then there's a piece. It's, uh, it's beautiful, no? <laughs> See, you didn't know non-cat was a dragon, did you? See, it's just... Nobody knows these things. And, uh... That's, uh, episode 7. Don't worry. It's mostly a red episode, with a bit of green. Um, and it's not oil. It's, it's, it's pixie juice. I swear. Alright. So... I swear I don't talk like that normally. Um, can we get the lights just a little bit higher? Alright, uh, just a quick announcement. We have little slips of paper on the front uh, chairs here. And we're going to use those for a game. So if you can write down the quotes on there, uh, we're going to have someone run around and collect them. So keep that in mind. If you don't have a pen, I believe he does. Yes, he does. Alright. So the next game we're going to play is called Story Switch. We're going to have all of our actors up here, and one just ran away. Um, what this is, is I am going to be directing them and telling a story. When I put my hand on one of them, they're going to keep talking. Exactly like that, apparently. Um, so what we need is a name of a fairy tale that hasn't been made yet. How about the princess and the giant robot? Okay. We also need two audience volunteers. Alright, you, Quana. You don't even know you volunteer for it. This is hilarious. Alright, so what we need during our uh, tale of the, the princess and the giant robot is actors to let the audience know what's happening along with our words. So are you guys up for doing some, some acting for us? Alright, so you're going to mind the things that they're saying. Names? Okay. Yes, my whole. So like, Sam, talk. Once upon a time, there was Cinderella and a giant robot. Now, the giant robot would go and try to capture Cinderella every day. Just like that. Just like that. Perfect, guys. All right, so what's your name? Rai and... Echebe? Hmm? Okay, Echebe and Rai. Let's hear it for them, folks. So, 
The princess and the giant robot. Once upon a time, there was a princess and a giant robot. They lived in a happy castle together, doing all sorts of things like parties and dancing and throwing balls. One day, the princess got captured and the giant robot said, I need to rescue her. Well, the sad thing is, he was a giant robot, so he just reached over, grabbed her, and pulled her back. And, like, covered a little bit by the top guy. But there was this magical force that was trying to keep them away. Every time he let go, she would fly away. Um, he, the, robot, no, the robot knew that he had to get his princess back somehow. So he had to chase her. He had to casually chase after her. Until, but every time he tried to chase, she kept like, getting farther and farther away. Until one day she was on the other side of a river and uh, the giant robot couldn't cross the river because he was short out if he went into the water. So he had to think, what can I do? What can I do? He tried, step, tried stepping into the river, but his foot immediately shorted out. So he had to pull it out with his hands. Then he looked around trying to figure out how to cross the river. So he knew that there was only one way he could do it. He had to find a way to use the animals in the river to cross the ocean, to cross it. He sent, he sent out a signal, all the fish appeared, and they all formed a bridge for him. That's it. So he walked across the bridge, and kind of went up to the princess. And when he got, got there, she flew away again. So he knew that there was this one mad scientist in the next village that could reverse his neutrinos. He went to the mad scientist and he says, I have a problem. And the mad scientist told him that he had exactly the solution. And then he gave him the anti-repelling gun, which he had. Which he had always had for some strange reason. So the robot says, okay, thank you for the anti-repellent gun. So how do I work it? And then that scientist thought for a while and said, I don't know, but just aim it at her and it should work. So he aimed it and fired it. And sparks flew from the gun. And sparks flew from the princess. And suddenly she was <laughs> magnetically attracted to the robot. Now the robot started running away because the princess was coming at him too fast. <laughs> and to this day, they are still running from each other. <laughs> So, what I need from the audience is an action. Help me guys out. Swimming. Fist bumping. Fist bumping. And a noun. A noun or a location. Platypus. Platypus. Platypus and fist bumping. What? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Charlie Talk Show. We have our great guest today. Call Mr. Weathers, who is an expert in fist bumping platypi. Hello, Mr. Weathers. Hello. So, is it true that it's really, really difficult to fist bump platypi? Well, it is for most people, see, but not me. And you must simply make a fist and then bump the platypus. Oh my, that, that's amazing, that is amazing. Okay, so, after you do that, now, I heard you're working on this big project. Yes, um, we've decided to build a giant fist and a giant platypus to do combat at the fist bumping. It's, uh, it's a very exciting project, we believe that it will bring platypus fist relations to whole new levels. 
levels. <laughs> now, now, the ASPCA has been claiming that you are just advocating punching flannel pot. How do you respond to this? I would never punch a mammal from Australia. I mean, who would do such a terrible thing ever? <laughs> Indeed. So, in that, in that scenario, how do you keep yourself safe from the platypus? Well, we found out that beekeeper nets work really, really well at containing them. And then, once they're held down, we just bump them. Bump them. Bump them. But, but, but a bit faster, like bump them. Bump them. Yeah, yeah. Bump them. Bump them. Exactly. I think you have the making of a fist bumping platypus in you. How would I get into this industry? Well, first off, you have to find a lot of southern hunters. And they're really into fist bumping platypuses. It's, the platypi industry in the south is amazing, especially in the in Australia. It's great to have you here tonight on my wonderful talk show. Okay, so I'm going to just actually move on to the Oh, yes. So do we want to get any questions from the audience? Super anime, and then I'm going to ask yes. things, and it's going to start looking well more realistic. Another thing is that you probably want to test it consistent with what you do. So, I mean, if you start with eyes what, like this... What happens if the platypus ends up upside down? We'll see. After I die, the moment. All right. Well, see, th this is a common defensive posture of the platypus. It, it, it's because it has fangs on its underside. Um, but you guys didn't notice. But Australia is a dangerous place, folks. All right. So what you do is you take the neck and you shake it real hard, and usually it goes back. Very nice. Have I ever killed a platypus by bumping it? No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Next question! <laughs> does, this, one. does this fish pumping technique work on other animals? Um, we found that it's very, very effective against rhinos, as long as you're bigger than the rhino. Um, and uh, particularly effective against cats, especially ones in lobster outfits. <laughs> Thank you for having me so much. Boy, thank you. Now let's go pump some platypuses. Excellent. All right, we're gonna move on to our next game. This is called Making Faces. How this game works is I'm going to be hosting a party. I'm going to have people that are going to be helping me throw a party come on either side of me. Now, they don't really like me that much, so whenever my back is turned, they're gonna start making faces. But if I turn around and see that they're making faces, I fire them, and they're replaced by someone else. So I need a reason that I would be throwing a party. My cat lobster is turning into a Hello Kitty TV show. So I got the costume set up for your cat lobster. See? Right? So here's the lobster against the red you asked for. Okay, uh, where's the producer? The pr producer? You're the producer, right? Uh, yes. So she, she has the costumes. I'm not really sure about those colors. Oh, okay. Um, well, we do have red. Red. Uh, pink. Uh, what do you think about pink? Uh, pink? I have... Well, I'm going to shoot. I have different shapes of pink right here, but... Um, what do you think about that shape? Um, wait, we can't fit that in the budget. Just, just move the decimal. Oh, okay, yeah, now, now we can. So, uh, what about green? Oh, green. Uh, I don't see the high green, so I'm going to ask for the red shape. Can you get me green? Uh, yeah, I can. See? Right there. Okay. Green. Green. What about blue? Blue? Once again, sir, I don't, you only asked me for like the red shape. Uh, can we cancel the red shapes? Yeah, we can do that. There you go. And put more cat ears on it. 
Cat ears. Cat ears? Yeah. Do you know how much it's going to cost? Can you make cat ears? You what are you doing? Something. I have, just I have, of course I have cat ears, but... So, uh, but... You cancel all the reds? Yes. And then, uh, I only have his reds! I wanted the pink. Uh, I brought some pink, too! Which is why I canceled the reds. So, so, yes. um, we actually can fit that in, but we might have to sacrifice the tail. The tail. Hey, get out of here. I, I want a new one. Go, oh, get out of here. Can you do tails? Tentacle? We can make that work. That could be the tail, right? That can work. You know, following this line, I'm keeping it back inches in here. Uh, so, what did you do with the tentacle? It doesn't taste, it doesn't taste well. Here, you can have it back. There you go. Thank you. Now, what did you want? Tails. Oh. <laughs> there you go. That's not a, this isn't a cat tail. No, it's a tentacle. We can use that. Just put some fur on it. Oh. Do you know why? Okay, okay, okay. We can make this work. How long is that going to last? Um, what do you mean by last? Uh, can we do, like, a full long production of that? Yeah, sure, why not? Do you know who this guy is? Yeah, yeah he's your replacement. Well, my replacement? Yes. <laughs> From the uh, costume person, not you. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, not you. you. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. <laughs> just just send the order in for, to get the uh, testicle, but yeah, technical. <laughs> for, uh, Sorry, my English is screwing up. Yeah, what else are you bringing? Do you have uh, pickles on? Do you have blue? The color blue, yes. Blue, I thought it was red. I don't believe that's in the budget. Is it in the budget? Uh, if I move that decimal there, then yes. He can move decimals. It's a color! I want blue. Like, ownership of blue? No, I need permission to use blue. Oh, yeah, just move a couple more decimal places. Six more. You got it. Six. Okay, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oops. I didn't order six, I ordered sixty-six. That's fine. Okay, okay. As long as you're okay with it. Blue. Can you give me green? You're the guy that can give me green, can't you? Green? Yeah. Man, no, no. Colorado has all the rights for green. Can you call Colorado? Yes, I can. Okay, so we're gonna we're, we're gonna talk through the green. No, no. Pink is necessary for this Hello Kitty project. So you want blue, green, and pink? Yes. Why don't you just get red and have all the primary colors? Because pink is better. Can I help you? Dude, I'm busy. You looked over. All right, I can't do pink. What I can do is three invisible lines, and maybe purple. Can they all intersect each other at three points? <laughs> sure. They're invisible. Make that happen. Now, how many decimals have to move so far? Uh, about seven million. What's our bottom line looking like? Um, <laughs> ten billion decimals. Some jumping jacks? <laughs> <laughs> this is a the animation studio. To get your acting self out of here. <laughs> now, I'm in trouble. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, yes? You're new here, aren't you? Uh, yeah, uh, I just got in today. Um, where do I have to work? Uh, do you know who, uh, where we're assigning this guy? Yeah, he's your coffee run guy. Coffee run guy. Uh, give me some coffee. Okay, sure. I'll go get the coffee, you know. Okay, we are about here, and production should be ready in a few days, so the only thing we need to do now is start shooting. Okay, where's, where's the gun? Not that type of... Actually, wait a minute, do we have the budget? Yeah. Foam? Really? Who puts foam in coffee? You, you, I mean, it's straight coffee. Okay, can you believe this guy? Foam gun. <laughs> See, no, you need to be more like him. Oh? He is like the ideal employee. <laughs> Can you do coffee? No phone. 
See? 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 You? You're getting a raise. I'm the producer. I'm the one doing the money. Exactly. Give yourself a raise. Move some decibels around. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Now. Okay. Hello Kitty. Can you do that? Like, like the baristas do? With, with the cream and the coffee? I thought did that use his phone. Oh, I thought you didn't want a phone. Uh, uh, what phone? Sir, what? sir, I'm sorry, but I forgot. He's not the coffee run guy. He's the uh, janitor. Well, he makes some pretty damn good coffee. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. No, no phone, but I want the little creamy Hello Kitty. Well, the, the phone is the Hello Kitty. That's how you draw. No, no phone, but the Hello Kitty. <laughs> but that's how... Can you believe this guy? Yeah, I know, I know. Well, you're, you're the one who hired the temp agency. Yeah? You know, there's this one place that I should be talking to. I think it's my account. Uh, really? Yeah. Can you, can you do me that? Oh, um, yes. You're my new account. Okay. Do I get a raise? No. You still get your coffee wage with the accountant responsibility. Now, yes. Are, are you doodling? Does that look like doodling? No, I'm moving decimals around. Isn't that what you want me to do? Good job. Good job. Okay. okay. So, do you want to have this written down? You know what? Three zeros, five zeros. One more zero. Seventeen zeros. That's how much money I have. <coughs> oh, 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 I thought that was how much money you lost. I lost that much? Uh, we're going to have to shut this thing down. <laughs> oh. Oh. Money. <laughs> At least I have coffee. I didn't actually see any faces, so I hope they did what they were supposed to. Alright, uh, we're going to move on to a game called Change. How this game works is Thomas and Kyle are going to do a scene. Now, at any time, our performers off stage can yell change. That means they're going to have to change their last line of dialogue. So, what I need from the audience is a poor choice for a first date. Sewage plant. Sewage plant, that's right. You guys are having your first date at a dump. Why? <laughs> Doesn't this smell great? I, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's literally a dump. Yeah, we, there's free food here. Change. There's free cars here. Change. There's free parts here. Change. There's stuff here. Change. Hi. <laughs> y yes, yes, I, I, we've been speaking for a while. Um, okay, but it, it's seriously disgusting. Change. I, I can't smell anything. Change. What is this? It's our dinner, you know, a little bit of eating the apple, a little bit of rotten meat, and a little bit of, I don't even know what that is. Is this, is this safe? Change. Is this dead? Change. You should eat some. <laughs> okay. I should eat some. <laughs> Change action. <laughs> oh my! Oh, wow! That's, I know what I'm doing. That's impressive. Change. I don't, that's... That was cheap. You see, going to the dump, it may be a poor choice. Yeah, I know, come on. It, but hey, we got all this free stuff now. We got beds, we got cars, we got everything. We've got everything. Yep. Change. No. Change. Maybe? Change. <laughs> sort of? Change. We've got semi three quarter everything? Ch -ch -ch change. We got semi and a half things? Ch -ch change. We got that? Holy crap, that's a beautiful car! Actually, I'm, I'm right about the surprise. Yeah, it's just, 
75 Camaro. Ching. A 92 Toyota. Ching. A 67 Thunderbird. Ching. A 2025 Chevy. The vinyl floor. <laughs> I don't even remember that. <laughs> 1975, 1992, 1967, 2025, Thunderbird Toyota Camaro Chevy. Yes, all that's my classic car collection. And yeah, it's all mine. <laughs> anyway, we just gotta make sure Ned, the, uh, gar the guard at the gate, can find us. Change. We gotta make sure Ned at the gate finds us. Oh, does, does he have something? Yeah, he has money and Change. he... Change. No, but he has money and we can get it. Change. He stole my popsicle the other day, we need to get it back. <laughs> okay, let's... Okay, so, how are we gonna steal with your popsicle back? Change. How are we gonna... So how are we going to kill him? <laughs> um, I'm in a junkyard. Take your pick. How about this machete? Change. How about this pipe? Change. How about this axe? Change. How about this buckler? Change. How about this sword? Change. How about this box? Change. How about this kitten? My kid, it's mittens. It's so cute. I know. Change. Mittens looks delicious. <laughs> hey, that's my cat. <laughs> yeah, he does. You <laughs> <laughs> <Did> change. <laughs> Shrimp, quick run. Change. Get him. <laughs> Iraq, Washington, D.C., and um, 
What's the question again? <laughs> right, now. Nah. Call the police, um, get him, tell him where he is, get him arrested. You might want to have to, you might need to collect a little bit of evidence first, depending on how lazy your police are. Um, so, yeah, I recommend that. So, your friend likes to start fires. What's the problem? You're not joining in? There's not enough fire? It's a pyrokinetic. A pyrokinetic. So, you just need to train yourself to use his pyrokinetic. Whatever, yeah, I already know who. You gotta fall with him. You gotta do stuff together. And that's how you form a lasting relationship that doesn't break apart when stuff catches on fire. Right. You said you wouldn't doubt me. <laughs> <laughs> you too. Next question. Um, how should I prepare my eggs for breakfast? Um, well, it's really a question of what you prefer. Um, I mean, I personally prefer eggs over medium. I like the yolk texture, but if you're more into the yolk, you might not fry eggs. Scrambled eggs are always a safe option. Um, of course, you why not add stuff? Cheese, uh, good veg, various vegetables are good. Uh, yes. Uh, I personally like to take up the carton, and just shake it, and then just open it up and fry that. <laughs> Have you heard of napalm? <laughs> See, the trick is, you do that, and then you, you put in about three quarters of a tablespoon of napalm. Shake that up real hard, and then you uh, chuck a match in, Instant eggs. Now, for a spice, I really like arsenic. Um, you are giving this to some sort of dictatorial leader, right? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Next one. When will the world end? When will the world end? Well, uh, the sun is expected to go into a red giant phase in about five billion years, so. That's probably going to kill a lot of things. Um, the heating of the sun might burn off the oceans well before then, to be honest. Uh, and uh, if we're lucky, we don't nuke ourselves to Kingdom Come. Uh, but my guy said about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks? Well, one second, got to check. What's that ETA on the bottom here? What? <laughs> but you, you don't have a... All right, so I'm going to have to go up with my plan. <laughs> You got about a week before I let out the cats. <laughs> Laser cats. I have 90 cats, and sometimes they eat my friends, but I don't know what to do. <laughs> your cats sometimes eat your friends. <laughs> um, put them down. <laughs> Go to the veterinarian. It, and you, you can get sued for that. Uh, dead at the gate, you, you can take care of your cat. You have 90 cats that are eating your friends, and you still have friends? <laughs> I, I don't know what your problem is. Like, this just sounds like the perfect life. You're apparently sociable enough to have friends that don't mind being eaten by 90 cats. Um, maybe you should... Enhance them with some lasers. I know a guy. What's the best way to come out of the morning? Don't. Get a tattoo right up here. Do <laughs> a selfie that gets that in it. Post it on Facebook. Go. Hey guys, I'm a Brody. That might be a little much. First, you should come to an improv panel. You should come up and ask a question during a game and say, How do I come out as a Brody? I'm 
immediately after this, you need to find a pony outfit. Put it on and run through the con screaming, I'm a brony, I swear! <laughs> Oh my god. What do I do again? Uh, yeah. I recommend stage the intervention at this point. Um, you might want to go see a counselor with him, have couples counselor. Uh, yeah. I don't really see a problem here. I just, you ought to trust him and let him make his own decisions. I don't know anybody. Plus, I know a way of hearing your boyfriend. Let's introduce him to this person over here. <laughs> they got some cats. <laughs> that might have lasers. For the smaller head to body ratio you have, the earthworm has a bigger head. So, like, the head is a big part of the body. Stop breaking the law! <laughs> um, the Irish law has been very good at this for about the last 300 years. <laughs> so, yeah, just contact the mom, say, I need a favor, and it will all work itself out in a couple of weeks. Well, the world's going to end in a week anyway. But, if you really want to avoid the IRS, we got some amazing countries in Africa. I mean, these guys are insane, and they will never extradite you. Plus, if you make friends with the bomb maker over here, who swear she doesn't make bombs, she can buy you protection through weapons of mass destruction. So, um, and again, this is no. like, <laughs> How do I get this guy to stop stealing my popsicles from my dumb? Hey! Call the police. <laughs> and, yes, exactly. Um, just to fill in the rest. Well, I, no, I don't see a problem here. There should be plenty of popsicles that don't for everyone. Yeah, shoulders, thank you. They're all mine. I just need to go off my head. Is that you? <laughs> Ted? What? What? Do you have all my popsicles? Another mat! What? I want them! Can't have the mat! Yeah, yeah! <laughs> not worth it! It's not worth it! Fine! Fine! He's got a kid that's delicious. Go go after that one. Oh, oh, get, get, I bet there's like welfare programs for dogs. 
start a dog walking program. Uh, once everyone pays you money, uh, just give them a dog and have them walk around. I know a guy. And he eat your dog and turn into a dog fighting ring. Now, this is the high end stuff, so he better be a big guy. I mean, if he's like a chihuahua, he's just going to get eaten by like, the great dance. He's a ninja dog. He's, he's a ninja dog. Alright, so we have the ninja dog fighting gauntlet. We bring the president in on this one. He loves Washington. He's a buddy of mine. And uh, we'll just enter him into that competition. And if he doesn't die, you get a thousand dollars. Maybe. <laughs> we get the last question. Sorry, no more questions after this one. Do you know you have the parking brake on? 
<laughs> I would hope so. Why, you like Martin? Eyes on the road, eyes on the road! Okay. Um, the locks. Yeah, they're okay. Okay. Wait. Why are we in the one? Yeah, me neither. How did, how did this happen? Would you like to know? Yeah, kind of would. Yeah, rocks! Rocks! Ah! Man, I have an abandoned head. Okay, um, I'm just gonna park this thing and leave you here. I don't have more pay for you. <laughs> not in my car. I'm not getting that bill again. Tear things up a bit. No, no, not in my car. Not bloody likely, this place is dead. Um, it's a car, it's not supposed to be alive. Maybe there's a reunion in town or a Billy Joel tour or something. Maybe. I don't know, I live in Oakland. This is not normal. Yeah, Oakland isn't really normal. <laughs> hey gang, this is a fun place, it's a fun city, huh? It's kind of fun, I mean, they do have a cracking con. Oh, I'm so stoked! I know, right? It's gonna be amazing. I don't have to put that in our next performance from you. Like we're going to Krakenbot and you're so stoked? Oh, uh, well, maybe there's a doctor here. Maybe. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I think that is my doctor. That is your doctor? That's a robot. That's nice. <laughs> the doctor's a robot. What's happening? <laughs> well, I did see a, a princess chasing him earlier. They're acting like a bunch of us. Yeah, I do tend to chase you a lot. The man's high. Yeah, you're pretty high. <laughs> That's the reason I love this country. You make a good product, and the people will come to you. Uh, of course, a lot of them are going to die, but that's the other reason I love this country. <laughs> okay, now feelings are getting weird. I'm just going to go check on something. Over. But I didn't! Sure. <laughs> Look at us. No, no, no one will. I'm getting close. Well, it's almost beating time. <laughs> it's okay, Thomas. It's okay. You've got great hair. <laughs>
special police head. He goes. <laughs> it's unkind. It's not working. Oh, uh, try it. Try it again. I, just, I don't. Oh, there it goes. Now you're clicking it wrong. It's way quiet. That's a weird noise. <laughs> okay, what? Okay, you can do that wrong kind of the wrong thing. Hey! Take a quill here. It's just... Achoo! Excuse me. You have a very light right hand. Shh. Wait, do you hear that? It's the bird I got the feather from! What? His name is Steve. Oh, hi, Steve. He's very, very calm. Uh, but here, uh, do you, do you, would you like to let Steve fly? <laughs> no? <laughs> I don't think he wanted to fly either. <laughs> Anyway, when do I start doing the shooting thing? The, the shooting? Well... Alright, it is a school. But I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Special for you, alright? I'm just gonna... I'm gonna pull my gun out of my holster. It's a really smooth holster. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna cock the gun. Wow. It, it's a small gun. <laughs> and I'm gonna fire in the air. It's only such as big. <laughs> I'm trying, yeah. Oh, whoa! It's got a kick to it. Just just a little bit. It's like a potato gun. <laughs> it shoots little potatoes at people. You wanna get that kid over there? I'll try. <laughs> whoa, come in. It, uh, it's a wrap, man. I'm the police. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, that's it. The, 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 oh, Steve! Yes, Steve. It's okay, Steve. Oh, God. That's right, Steve. Yes, Daddy loves you. <laughs> anyway, when do I start my training? You're, you're training? Yeah. You're, you're, you're not even out of high school yet, kid. Yeah, but this is what I want to do. I want to help people. All right, your first training is I'm going to put Steve on your shoulder. It's all right. He likes to fight. Okay. Okay. And all right, all right. Now I'm gonna shoot him off you with a potato gun. Uh oh. I'm gonna pull out a holster. Cool. <laughs> and three, two, one. You got him. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I replaced it with my flag gun. It just. Shoots a black right out and kids him. Well, what about Steve though? He's hurt. Oh, who cares? I use him for quills anyway. Oh, oh hey. Steve. Alright. Okay. So for the last thing I'm gonna show you, I have my squad car over here. So we're gonna get you ready? What? Do you get ready? We we're gonna go show our ride. Yeah! Yeah, hey, let me just open the door for you. That was my nose. Just, you gotta be more careful. Sorry. Alright, just get in the car. Alright, now I'm gonna open up my door. Sounds exactly the same, it's awesome, isn't it? Alright, turn it on. Oh, there's an old man in the trunk, don't worry. Grandpa, is that you? Shut up, old man. Alright. There's an older man for the engine. Alright, now, the key to any good joyride is the siren next to the arm. Okay. Alright. I turned it on, I turned it on. Don't do that, you're not on. Alright, now there's the sissy one. Alright. Okay, okay, okay. We're going with the new one. Go.
I forgot the gas they all had. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna get sued if I get caught with you. <laughs> and, um, I'm out of here. <laughs> Give her a round of applause for this back row of the princess up here. Oh, this is my favorite one. <clears throat> so, this is called Blind Date. What this is, is I am a um, bachelorette on a dating show. And I have to choose between three odd personalities who are going to be performed by Sam Thomas and Reeve. Um, Sam is an odd personality on the side of the stage right now. And while they're setting up the chairs. So I don't know who they are, what they are, but I'm going to ask them questions anyway. And I have to try to determine who they are. So I, I need to look away while you guys get to find out what they are. Did it change? Yes. Good. <laughs> I'm going to assume that you're not laughing at my immediate peril. <laughs> Alright, is everyone good? Did it turn back? Good. <laughs> you don't need a mic. I swear. No, good. <clears throat> Alright. <clears throat> Hello and welcome. I'm going to be asking these fine men some questions. So... <laughs> contestant number one. Where would we go on my first date? It, 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 it doesn't matter. Everyone's horrible. Everyone there will be horrible. Actually, if no one's there, that would be the best place. Like, I don't know, um, beach, yeah, beach. Contestant number two. Contestant number two. Where's mommy? Where's my mommy? Are you okay, honey? <laughs> I was the Great Wall of China. How would you build me? Ah, uh, one brick at a time, so I can touch every single one of them. <laughs> and then we can walk along it together. <laughs> Contestant number one. You are a jelly filled donut. What would you be filled with? Yes. Lies! All lies! Don't you give me that! Don't you give me any of that! A question? <laughs> you know, I, I know I know what you're up to. I know what you're up to. Contestant number two!
ignore, ignore her. She's, she, 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 she's just faking it. She just wants attention. We just want attention too. This is test number two. If you were in an actual relationship, would you be this clingy? What See? Reverse. 
see.
Go to bed again, call back a close. <laughs> How this thing works is Thomas and Reed are going to act out a scene. And they're giving these big pieces of paper that you've so graciously written on. Uh, they're going to do a scene, and periodically they're going to pull out the lines from their pockets and use them in the scene. Now, what, what I need from the audience is what is the title of the last fan fiction you read? Shout it out, I can't move. Buzzing of the bees. Bees. Buzzing of the bees. You guys are going to be performing the buzzing of the bees. Whenever you're ready, take it away. Are you the problem? No, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep them on. No, let's keep them on. Come on. Put your back into it. <laughs> He's killed another man today. I can't believe it. It's gone too far. She was right here, but they had to cart him off. Oh, man. He was a very tall guy, huh? Yes. You know, he used to tell me things. I knew this guy. He said, there's a spoon in my Gutiest Maximus. That would be just like him. He said it so beautifully. No one else can say Gutiest Maximus like he did. Ah, uh, I remember the one time when he told me your nerd slaps don't hurt me. Yeah, you two used to always do that. I know. Look at this, look at this. It's really interesting. Well, we gotta investigate this. Bees. Bees. I read a book on this once. What was it called? Oh, it was called I Like the Smell of Cat Poo. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's good. It's also good thing. It, 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 it's definitely going work. Mm, and, uh, it's not identification. Oh, man. Hey, hold on, hold on. Look at this. What it's, is it? It's... Zazinga. Zazinga? Zazinga. Oh, Zazinga. Oh, my God. That's super rare. I know, right? What is that doing here? Ah, uh, I think... I think it's a murder. A murder? Yes. Is it bees? Zazinga is well known to, have ex to excite bees. No, I remember a case that was a case from like like this ten years ago. It was called the Life is like a box of chocolate case. Oh uh, god, the life is like a box of chocolate case. Life is like a box of chocolate. Yep. Oh god. Yeah, that was ten years ago. That was ten years ago. I still remember the verdict. You aren't even eating. Okay. Oh, it's saying, I'm not a doctor, but I, but I play one on TV. 
Clearly, we have a psychopath on our hands. This is lame, and I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. Wait a second. It, 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 let's see. It's lame. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. Oh, there's a there's horse. What is this? Yes, okay. So, those are lines from the famous television show, um, the Star Trek anime. Oh, man, I heard about that. It's good. Yeah. But the next slide that comes up is uh, touch my button, buy me pizza. <laughs> touch my button, buy me pizza. What does this have to do with bees? It's our next clue. But, They're going to release the bees in the pizza place. But who's the doctor? The proctologist. Oh, of course, the hammer man. What do we say to him when we go investigate? Well. That twasn't enough rough night for Macbeth. <laughs> Just more of that acting, you know? Right. Macbeth is perfect for this. Okay. So then, let, let's let's go let's go to the uh, pizza place. Okay, sure. So, um. Well, oh, let's get the car. Should we go for backup first? You know you know what they say about backup. They say. I like rusty spoon. <laughs> we, 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 have to, we have to go in. We don't have time to clean it up. That's mm, true. Okay, fine, let's just go. Okay, I'll get the car. Uh, what did I take that? Okay, and... Let's, uh, okay. Oh, oh it's it that song on the radio. What's it called? I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's called... Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay, here's the pizza place. Oh, hey, no. Oh, I can't wait to drive. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll pull over. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, yes, so. Did you just leave on my side of the car? Yeah, I, uh, my, so my door was stuck. Oh, okay. Okay. By the way, the rest of the grandma has a nice touch. So, here we are at Cats Are Awesome Pizza. Cats are awesome. Yeah, well... Wait, the cats, the pizza, the proctologist. It all makes sense. Bees. Bees. And the bees. Dr. Bees. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. He used to tell me things. He used to tell me, release the Kraken. <laughs> Okay, we gotta come, we gotta go in there, real fast. Hold on, I have to get my potato gun. Oh, right, standard issue potato gun. Ah, there we go. <laughs> How'd you do that? You push it against your forearm. You know, okay, no, you know, you know what, I'm just gonna hit him. Okay. Okay, we have to do our battle cry when we go in. Okay. What is it? Um, my battle cry when we go in, is I'm not touching you. I'm not touching, touching you. you. <laughs> that was a great D movie. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, now that Dr. Bees has released the crack, we have to have a press conference. Uh, so what this is is Thomas is going to be giving us a uh, press conference. He doesn't know who he is, and we're all going to be asking questions because we know who he is and we're reporters. Um, so while he's not looking, everyone will find out his identity. Okay. Can you turn around now, Thomas? Uh, so, uh... We're a little short on time, so I'm just going to skip straight to questions. Yes. Why? <laughs> I just felt like it had to happen. <laughs> How? <laughs> Massive quantities of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing. 
Yes. Yeah, uh, Sam from the Times. Oh, sorry about that afterwards before. Um, so where are the people going to live? Well, they can live. Well, I mean, it's not really my problem. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, I'm his assistant. So, what did the money buy exactly? Um, several houses. <laughs> yes. Do you have any idea how this affected the children? I'm not sure I care yet. <laughs> yes. Uh, say for the again. Uh, where are you going to be? Well, you know, I can, I've heard that I kind of want to live in Los Angeles. <laughs> yes. So, what did you do in Los Angeles? <laughs> um, well, there was the one thing led to another, and now we've just gotten here. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, was Los Angeles the destination? It's all going coming for a full circle now. It's, it's where it started and where it's going to end. Yes. W what did your henchmen think of this plan? Honestly, they thought it was a pretty good idea overall. Except for Steve. <laughs> yes. Did anyone try to stop you? Um... There was this one guy, I can't remember his name. Uh, no, he's not coming to me. Yes. You know, it's about time you've been spouting these threats for a while. Uh, so, what's your next project? Well, I think I'm going to try to go into acting. That's why I'm going to Los Angeles. Yes. It's the reason you kept Los Angeles. <laughs> yes. What is the name of the tool you use to do this? Well, it's kind of secret. Um, we've codenamed it the Toy Box. Any other questions? Yes. How did the houses factor in? <laughs> well, I want them. <laughs> yes. Did Stewie influence you? No. Not really. Kinda. Yeah. Yes. Just really curious, what's gonna happen to the moon? <laughs> well, there aren't gonna be any moonlit strolls from now on. Any other questions? <laughs> yes? Are there any more that are next on the list? Um, I'm thinking most of Asia.
how this game works is we're going to start with Kyle and Reeve. They are going to be put into a pose of your choice. They're going to have to start a scene in those positions. At any time, the other actors can yell freeze, and they, he will stop acting. The other actor will join in, maybe tag one of them out, and they'll start a new scene in those poses. So I need a pose for Reeve. Close enough. And a pose for Kyle. Alright. Take it away. Oh, we will stop you, evil doer! Dude, you're doing a show now. I'm practicing Tai Chi, what are you doing? You're breaking character! Oh no! That's like a part of the costume! That's what my script says! No, it doesn't. Just 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 face it. You're on page five, we're still on page two! Seriously? Yes! I know how to solve this solution. 
resolution? You! Uh, oh, 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 oh. I think I know the solution to our real problems. Oh. Uh, uh, no pressure, no pressure. Oh. Wait for my yaoi fan fiction. Hey, you scram! I'm using you as reference, come on! Everyone wants to see Levi John and Aaron get it on, right? So, I'm sure you can do this. My hips are moving on their own. I, so are mine. What in the world? There we go. See, keep moving, keep moving. What like is this? Okay. I don't think this was worth $5. <laughs> don't tell me a seat, right? <laughs> now guys, I know you guys have been practicing football for a while, but the ball should not be dropped. Why? 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 So Why? the other guys can take it. But. 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 Okay, pick up the ball. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it? Got it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> now, hold on to it. Alright, alright. Hi. Alright, alright. Good. Dad, dad. Okay, you guys, holding on to the ball was good. Holding on to each other, not. That cat never listens. 
words to me. <laughs> Sucks for you. <sighs> I'm out of here. It's sad that the cat's bigger than all of us. <laughs> yeah, I know, I've never had one twice my size like this. I know. You beat that cat way too many popsicles. Yeah. Just in a very calm way. No. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> oh god, it's Cat's Lover. It's Cat's Lover. There's gotta be, there's gotta be more obstacles here somewhere, right? <laughs> Did he just... <laughs> I don't think there's any more popsicles around here. Just look. Freeze! just stipple it. Run it around the edges. It's all suspicious at the hairline. Just run it around the skin and break it up. Well, of course it's gonna be like that. Uh, yes, you're fabulous. Uh, excuse me, ladies, showtime is in three minutes. Three oh. minutes? I haven't done makeup yet. I don't know what you're doing. Great. I'm the makeup artist. Where am I supposed to go? Oh, we God. have three minutes. Three minutes. We cannot wait too long. There is a big crowd out there. Everyone's waiting. We have to see this show through. Okay, okay, okay. I gotta do my crash course, kid. Okay, here's the stencil. Here's another stencil. Now shut your eyes. <laughs> Is that a method of mingling? I told you to close your eyes, pretty. Here's some lipstick. Here's some lipstick and some mascara. Mascara. Oh, we have a minute left. We're sorry. Now, for just 1995, you can get this makeup shot up for your own. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah. See, look how many females are going crazy for this lovely device! Oh now you may be asking, how does it work, right? Yes! Let's, no. let's do a demonstration, sir, why don't we? You load in the makeup in this barrel. Yes. And the highlighter in this one. Yes. And the lipstick in that don't one. Don't forget some of the powder. Like that? Add some blush. Oh, yes. Stick that in the magic bullet. <laughs> Pour that in the shotgun <laughs> shells. And then wait, we wait, aim. Wait, wait, wait. And wait, three, wait, two, wait, one. Wait. Far away, otherwise the blush goes up the nose. <laughs> but with that, we have a free system um, here for um, use for something like that. That's why we have the makeup taser. The makeup taser. <laughs> we'll throw this in for free. You see? <laughs> and this is how it works. Look at that red face, folks. He is perfect for the prom. And I'm just glad it wasn't used on me. And with this, you can go up to your friends and just give them a makeover without actually having to tell them. It's the best way to save friendships. Can I have another shot, please? That was great. Of course. Let's bring it up a bit. Let's get in some more of that blush right there. Now, Jimmy, you can't play possum to fade out the possum. It worked last time. Just, you took a nap for two hours, and the possum just sat in the cage. It worked, didn't it? It's still in the cage. Freeze. Yeah. 
So uh, we'll just burn out the rib cage. Did you just kill him? This is my patient. Now I have to take him home. Yep, he's dead. Are you sure? Clear. Do it again. Clear. Yeah.